alluded to it before with Alan Smith. It's a horrific injury that he suffered. I believe it was at Anfield. In fact, I think I was there that day in the FA Cup. I think we got beat. Uh, and to compound things, Alan got badly injured. Is that the worst injury you've had to help someone overcome in terms of your role as a physical trainer, in conjunction, obviously, with the physios? Is that one of the worst injuries? You... Yeah, what happened was horrific, weren't it? You know, I mean, we've we've had injuries worse in in terms of it took so much longer to sort out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, it, it was shocking, absolutely shocking, and such so sad. Yeah. You know, for me. Um, He's a great lad, but there we we end up working together um, harder and and better, you know, because of understanding each other. Because you spend more time together. Yeah, and he, obviously he came back, and he, yeah. he's, he's he's still playing now. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's, yeah. uh, it, it was um, a job well done in terms yeah, of bringing yeah. him back into the fold. Um, if you think in terms of an injury or injuries that really were persistent and horrible, it was Owen, Ar- Owen Argreaves. Oh, right, you know, yeah. I worked with Owen all the time, you know, a fantastic guy. Yeah. And, you know, what happened to him with his knees and that was, was really, really sad. Because yeah. I think he'd give everything he got to try and get that right. And uh, it just worked against him. And, and sometimes I, I heard these little things about, you know, somebody saying something detrimental. And I, I can't. I can't ever see a day where you could say he'd not worked as hard as he could to try and be, you know, the best he could be in best condition. Uh, very, very sad days to yeah. hear what went went on. Yeah, it's um, obviously a couple of players during your tenure at the club that that unfortunately were blighted by injury. Was mm-hmm. like I mentioned Owen Argus and, and mm-hmm. Louis Sahar was yeah, another one yeah, who yeah. was recurrently mm-hmm. injured. Were they play? I mean, it must have been demoralising for them. Was part of your job as much to kind of maybe maintain morale as much Absolutely. as it was the physical side Absolutely. of it? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the things these days that's not really taken into the gym. Yeah. You know, um, my role was not, and that, that's the thing about being a dad. I had five kids, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they were four of them, well, it, all of them were athletes, uh, uh, you know, but all the friends, and you realise how mentally they've got to be up for things and things get them down so you've got to pull them up sometimes you have to bring them down because they're a bit too, you know it's yeah. it's very much um, an ongoing thing not just doing training exercises about talking listening empathizing yeah. whatever is needed at the time yeah the only way you can learn that stuff is being in the gym with these people and, and going through the motions with them yeah but like you say there you can confirm that because there were there have been rumors and you know people said oh with Sahar, which I always found a bit ridiculous, he said, oh, it's in his mind, he's, he's not in, you know, you heard some people who are quite clearly yeah. uneducated about sport yeah, yeah. would say things like yeah, that, but absolutely. obviously you can confirm that these guys were working working the tails off absolutely. to get back and unfortunately yeah. just physically were let down yeah. a little bit. If you talk about physiques, Louis, Louis Sahar was a joke. His physique was unbelievable. Yeah. He was such a fantastic physical Entity, yeah, specimen, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And it was so sad. Again, you know, you see what they've got, yeah. but they can't get it because of all these bits and bobs that are going on, injuries, and, and it's, it's a nightmare. And did it become like a puzzle a little bit, trying to kind of solve the, the genetics of someone like Louis? Because one week he'd be injured one part of his leg, then it'd be his knee, then his hamstring. So it's, it must have been difficult trying to get the, the puzzle Absolutely. Right. Absolutely, it is a, a massive puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> Getting yeah. the puzzle right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it is a shame, Owen. And because you were just one thing, and it brings something else out. And you, you know, you get that right, and then something else has gone because you're putting pressures in different areas. And yeah, you know, it's, it's a shame. Yeah, it, it's a shame with those two specifically. The two very talented yeah, uh, players, absolutely. Weren't they? Um, yeah. I suppose another an obvious question with regards to. Sir Alex, I mean, you worked alongside one of the greatest ever managers in the game for 11 years. Um, what's your kind of abiding memories of Sir Alex, just being around him, working alongside him? Well, I mean, you know, there was only one gaffer, you yeah. know, and he was the gaffer. And um, you've got to do your job, you know, which I like to think I did. And um, one of my jobs was actually training him. Did you? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He used to sneak away and stuff like that at times. He used to have him banging on his door to get him out and he wouldn't come out sometimes. But he always said to me, oh, you know, I need you and I want you to train me. And so as much as I could, yeah. which, I mean, the, the guy was in at seven o'clock every morning. 
Yeah. You know, it's the most dedicated. Again, when you come to dedication of being in football and Alex Ferguson's dedication to his football role was unbelievable, you yeah. know, and um, he tried to get everything right and how successful can you be? Yeah. But f from my point of view, I saw areas where, you know, he needed to do some physical exercises, needed sometimes to, you know, leave things and not be so stressed because it's a massively stressful job. Yeah. Especially having to sit behind that desk and say to some people, yep, I want you. And other people, no, I don't. Yeah. You know, that sort of um, managerial role is, is difficult for everybody. But he managed it very, very well. And, and what kind of physical stuff would he do with Sir Alex? Am I right in boxing. saying... Would he box? He loved the boxing. Serious? He loved throwing punches out there. He was hoping that he'd catch me. But, you know, <laughs> I was a little bit younger than him, so I could keep going. <laughs> yeah, he did the ways he did. You know, he, he went on the... The run machines and the bikes and all that stuff, yeah. Right. Because I believe, didn't he retire early based on some knee injuries? Obviously, he was a player himself, wasn't he? Yeah. Played for Glasgow Rangers. Yeah. I think he retired due to knee injuries. So, did, were there not any limitations with him in terms of what he could oh, do? There was limitations, but, you know, I didn't go into much depth with that because he just needed some physical fitness. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just to keep that heart rate going, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cardio, respiratory work, you know, get their muscles working a little bit. But it's nothing too intense. But, yeah. you know, it, when you say, you know, what was he like? Well, he liked to have the gloves on and throw yeah. a few punches occasionally, you know what I mean? Fantastic, fantastic. And what, and what in terms of, because you, well, two questions actually. With regards to the, the, the routine, it seemed very much, it surprised me actually, the way you've talked. It sounds like very much open it was an open forum in the sense that players would come to you, especially at the start. Was it not something whereby each player had a specific allotted time that they had to do physical exercise, or, or was it? They did eventually, but right. in the old days, no. I had to prove my worth. You know what I mean? They would put a couple of sessions on per week, yeah. you know, with the team, and then I'd have to take them all through the generic sessions. Yeah. Um, but in general, they would come and seek one-to-one -one training, really, or one to two training, you know. But it, but it wasn't compulsory at no, the beginning. No, no, It kind of progressively not. became more... Yeah, yeah structured, enforced. if you like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So that's why you say, like, you'd see more of certain players than others, yeah. the gigs is when they had their yeah. injury. Oh, when they was Ronaldo, injured. Ronaldo, when he wanted to... That's when you build up your greatest relationships when they're injured. Yeah. You know, and that's why you have to have a really good um, relationship with your, your medical people and a good relationship with the players mm -hmm. and you can get on with doing the work that they need and, and everything's fine and rosy. And in terms of Sir Alex, obviously say like he was the gaffer, did he take a very active interest in players' physical states? As in, did, did he liaise with you at all? Oh, did yeah, he sort absolutely. of leave it to the professionals oh, in that domain as such? He did with everything. I mean, that was great thing about him being a manager he didn't do everything himself yeah. you know he, he looked over everything that was going on you know but was um, he always into like for example when when Roy was making a comp was he always speaking to you how long's you know his hours no 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 he would go to the head physio he would never yeah. do that come to me right. you know that's not my job yeah. my job is you know to talk to Rob and talk about what I'm doing and he would help, you know ask me to do this or you know could we do that and then we work together but the gaffer goes to the head of the department, you know what I mean? He right. knows how to structure everything for the for the um, workforce to work together as a team. Right, It's okay. all teamwork, you know. And, uh, but w would he ever approach you and ask certain things oh, about yeah, how is that would, player yeah. getting on with yeah. this plan or... Yeah, yeah. yeah of course he would, yeah. So he yeah. was always taking an active interest yeah. in everything that was going on. Yeah. The, the most important thing to me about Strikers Ferguson was this. He was in his office yeah. at 7 o'clock in the morning and his office overlooked the car park and also overlooked where they trained. Yeah. Now, every day, he would see all the players coming in in their cars. Yeah. So if you're seeing them coming in, you see the ones who are on the phone, the ones with their headphones on, listening to music, the yeah. ones with the chin down, the ones with the che chest out. Yeah. So we watched all that. He was the greatest psychologist. Yeah. You know, I, I worked with Bill Bessick. What a fantastic guy he was. And there were great days with Steve McLaren and uh, Bill Bessick. But he was a psychologist. But yeah. Yeah. the ultimate psychologist is Alex Ferguson. Yeah. So we watched all the players coming in. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. They go and have the breakfast and then get ready. And then he, he sees them all going out. And he lets the early training sessions start up, you know, your boxes and everything. And then he goes out and he's watching them train. And he's deciding on... What he, who he's going to play in the team, you know, based on lots and lots of things, not just what they're doing on a daily basis, but based on yeah. his knowledge and understanding of who they're going to play against, yeah. who he's got in his squad, 
you know, there's a rotation system, which there has to be, you know, yeah. because they're such a big squad. He knows who's on it and who's not on it because when they walk in in the morning and somebody's got their head down like that or chest out like that, who's confident, who's not, who's yeah. having trouble, you know, they're all having, you know, getting married, having kids, buying houses. Well, yeah. that, that all has different effects on does, our yeah. player is during the day doing his work. Yeah. And by his observations of all them players and knowing and understanding what goes on in that work, people in going in for the dinner even, you know, he'll sit there and he'll talk and he'll listen and all the rest of it. He was observing all the time. Greatest observer I've ever come across of people. Yeah. It's fascinating because, you know, as sort of... Um as fans and I suppose journalists do it, tend to do it as well, you, you kind of, you'll see a player on a Saturday, maybe not performing amazingly on the pitch, but, you know, you look, there's always that famous adage, oh, he must be doing brilliant in training because I'm not seeing it, you know, he's seeing it in the week, but like you say, if someone's observing everything during the week, that, that contributes to who they're picking on a Saturday. Absolutely, yeah. It's, um, but he's a strategist as well, you see, he was into war, he, he, he liked to look at battles and war and you know, that sort of thing. So he really understands war strategies. So it's something Whether he was armies or, on, was yeah, like oh, The yeah. art of war. All that sort of stuff, yeah. Right, yeah. he was well read on it. it yeah. I mean, like you say, I'm not going to probe too heavily here because I know you're a very honourable person and, and, you know, discretion and everything like that. But you said you got quite close to some players and Alan Smith you mentioned there and obviously Keno when he was making his comeback. I mean, is there any kind of insights into any of the players that maybe the everyday fan isn't aware of? Something they liked or something, I don't know, did did Roy Keane prefer peanuts to almonds but just no one ever know about it or something <laughs> random? Yeah. Is, there, is there any insights you can give us that aren't controversial? Well, here's one that's hopefully not controversial. <laughs> it regards Gary Neville because he was a character, a yeah. real, real character. And obviously, Phil is his brother who was there. But um, I remember Gary Neville saying to me, um, I've decided to start playing guitar. Yeah. So he's having guitar lessons. Anyway, he comes to me one day and he said, I can't believe it. He said, I was having guitar lessons off this, this lad. <laughs> I was really enjoying it. And then I played for the first team. Yeah. He said, so the guy put the price up by double. <laughs> I said, you what? He said, he put, he's doing no more, but I'm now playing for the first team, so I've got to pay double. He said, that's outrageous. Now, I used to be a guitarist. Yeah. And uh, not a very good one, by the way. <laughs> um, but I said, well, how good are you? He said, oh, not very good. I said, well, um, I, I play the guitar myself. Yeah. I used to play in a band, <clears throat> you know, on the Yorkshire circuit when I was, I was younger. Yeah. And um, I ended up starting to teach him some things on the guitar. And yeah. so we, we made a great relationship because I was just showing him some, some stuff on the guitar. He brought all his, all his music books in and this, that and the other. We used to sit in the gym after everybody was gone playing guitar. Fantastic. So yeah, yeah. that was a, a really interesting one. That, uh, so you pro yeah, built a really good rapport with him yeah. outside of football as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of thing, like I say, like not everyone's aware of these no, things. No, exactly. So I've, brilliant. I've got a lot, but yeah. um, people have actually said to me, you know, because I, 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 like, I love telling stories anyway. Yeah. Um, I've always been a big storyteller. Yeah. Um, and people have approached me about doing some kind of book, you know, one of these books that you put on the internet and stuff like that. So yeah. I have a website, See The Speed. Yes. And there's lots of stuff on there. But the deep stories, I don't particularly, I, I'll just give you one about Gary there, you know, yeah. but I, I don't put out too many because one day I would like to tell the story if anybody was really interested and uh, yeah. wanted to read it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think people would be fascinated to uh, to learn more, you know, little sort of anecdotes. And as I say, nothing there. Yeah, well, exactly. Nothing, it's just I mean, interesting, it's innocuous, aren't they? Yeah. Aren't they? Yeah, it's not, exactly. nothing controversial, just no. the amusing ones, no. really. Oh, got some amusing stories, don't you? Yeah, is there any others you can... <laughs> uh, not that I can repeat not, on it. No, no. <laughs> right, OK. Sort of Christmas party yeah, ones yeah. and stuff like that, is there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you, you were talking a little bit before about Ronaldo's natural physique and obviously probably naturally gifted as well with genetics, but it's probably a common misconception amongst fans, but people sometimes just look at someone's body type and presume oh, that's a person that maybe struggles to maintain weight or fitness or something. And I know the me media have criticised Rooney in the past maybe for fluctuating a little bit or not, uh, with fluctuating with fitness. I imagine he's very, very fit lad, isn't he? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, like you said before about the boxing, you know, um, I used to do some boxing with Wayne. Yeah. And he had one hell of a punch, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which I know all too well about in but, front of the uh, 
uh, front of all the lads. You know, he, he used to love, because you got 20 odd bikes, everybody would go on the bike and, yeah. you know, do some warming up. But he'd love to get me on the pads, you know, in front of everybody, as though to say, yeah. I'm the man, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's a very, very powerful lad. And was, um, put you on the spot here, he would win in a spa then between Keno and, uh, and, and Wayne. Got that. Technical draw. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's one of my. I mean, um, I'd, I'd have to put it down to Roy, just because of his amateur background. No, not necessarily. No, because um, Wayne actually did, went did he to actually it, have um, an amateur background as well. Wayne? Yeah, but he didn't. Had, he didn't actually fight. You know, right. he didn't have any actual tournament fights, yeah. whereas Roy did. But it's just um, the way he picked things up, right. um, Roy. What like a, technique? What yeah. technical? Yeah. yeah. Whereas um, Wayne's more of a brawler. Brute force, <laughs> brute force, of, and yeah. ignorance at times. Yeah. yeah, fantastic, right? Fantastic. Um, but yeah, with regards, Wayne, he, he was a dedicated one, wasn't he? You can of kind not. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just ridiculous sometimes how the media and fans can certainly uh, misunderstand yeah. these things. Well, but, if things are going wrong, you know, they're quickly there to point the finger and all the rest of it. But you know, yeah, I can assure you that Wayne is a very powerful and fit lad. Yeah, dedicated to playing football. He's a real footballer. He loves football. And now, what's he done? Ended up scoring more goals than anybody else has he or something like that. Yeah, yeah, he's broke, breaking records. Well, there you see. Because he was so dedicated to football. Yeah. Really. Just wanted to play football. I could imagine him as a little kid. Just want balling. I want to play football. That was it. And, and from your kind of insight, as a, as a man who obviously understands the mechanics of the human body and things like that, he has, a, even though he's been breaking records, Ironically, recently he's had a bit of a dip in form, and what people perceive to be a dip in form f by his high standards. And some people have attributed, attributed it to the fact that he started playing at such a, an elite level at such a young age mm. that it's almost because he's played 14 years or so in the Premiership mm. that maybe that's contributed to him not quite physically being able to do what he used to do. And d do you think he has got longevity in him as well, Wayne Rooney? It's hard to say. I mean, obviously, the managerial staff, etc., has changed. A lot of people have changed at the club. Yeah. Um, certainly, when I was there, he came in, you know, wanted it so much and, and did really well. Um, what's gone on since, I don't really know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say. I, I wouldn't like to put my finger on it. Yeah, yeah. But you know, potentially, he's he's a great lad. And and again, he's not one who's had loads of injuries. Yeah. That counts a lot. You know, if they start getting injuries very early early age and it's knocking them out of games and stuff like that um, it's hard to keep it going yeah you know losing form I don't think he particularly loses form that easily things don't always work out as well because it can be with the way the team's playing as well not necessarily yourself yeah yeah, yeah. you know so you, people were very quick to judge and at the end of the day they get you know footballers get paid a lot of money and expected to do a good job which should happen but it's the reasons why way might go through some bad patches I wouldn't like to say now yeah, no, because I'm not involved in it, you know. Yeah, no, it's absolutely fair enough. Um, quick question regarding another kind of curious case in terms of physical health um, whilst you were at the club um, was Darren Fletcher. I mean, I can't remember specifically the timing of it, but I think it would have coincided towards the end of your tenure at the club where he had this illness. Yeah. Um, and we all know it kind of, he dropped quite a dramatic amount of weight and... Mm -hmm. And it seemed for a while, maybe, that he never would make a, a comeback to the, the elite level of football. Yeah. Was it a worrying time? And were you there to help him maybe try and maintain his weight a bit? When I first met Darren, he was like that. Mm. But his ability to apply pressure as a skinny lad it was incredible. People tend to think in terms of strength and power as being big muscles, all the rest of it. Yeah. You get somebody tall and slim as able to put his weight in the right position and put that pressure there. He yeah. was amazingly strong to play against yeah. for a wiry lad. And I think that's, with his way, wiry, but strong-minded, strong-willed, yeah. tenacity, all that sort of stuff. Now, he never said anything to me while I was there. I think he was going through problems, but you know, the, the idea is that you tell the doctor or whoever, the, the doctor about your health, the physio about your injuries, you know, if you want some strength of power, you. You know, you, you, you gym coach and then your football goes to your football coaches. Yeah. And they do tend to stick with the people for the right job. And that's very, very important. I didn't know that he had this problem until yeah. after I left. 
But the great thing for me was, because Darren kept coming and going, if you like, at the club, he, he was getting better, and then, you know, I had to come away from it, you know, I had to, I months off and this, that and the other. Yeah. Um, he's well supported by the club, of course. But he actually come to me and said, look, can he come and train here and the other place? Because he didn't want to keep going up to the uh, the training ground and people, oh, you're back now, everything all right. Yeah. He just wanted a spell out of it. So we trained together here for a while. The, the doctor knew about it and everything, you know. So yeah. he came and we had a great time and, and he got back. And, and now, obviously, he's not at United anymore, but he's still playing football and he's done so well. To come That's through awesome. that is yeah. absolute. And, and the, the thing about coming through stuff like that is it sends a message to other people who are going through yeah. similar problems. You know, obviously, he's got the, the right back in and the right out with hospitals, etc. But it, a lot of it is about your tenacity, your inner strength. And that's what I saw. He, he broke his foot three times. When it was something like when he was 16, 17 and 18. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was asking questions, obviously, to me as well, as why is he breaking his foot? Yeah. You know what I mean? So we had to look into that, but obviously we get over that. And then, you know, uh, he, he had a great spell, you know, playing really, really well. Yeah. And then this happens. And I think it happened due to the fact, uh, at the time, as his form went off is because of this problem. We, I didn't know about it. Yeah. You know, people tend to think if you're at United, whether you're just a staff, you know, at the cook or whatever, you'll know everything you don't. Because mm. these people are told you don't tell everybody everything because you don't know what effect it can have. You no. know, they're very public, uh, the very private things. Yeah, yeah. You can't be too public with what you've got to say. And I, I'm happy with that because you're not walking around with secrets that you're frightened of telling anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's very important. And did, with Darren, like you say, when you obviously did, when you've come back here and you're not at United and he's come to you subsequent to that, was there ever any element of doubt in his mind or was he that sort of headstrong that he always believed he was going to make Absolutely. a comeback? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Nothing more sure that he was going to come back, if anybody could. Yeah. I'd say he could. Fantastic. Because I'd think he'd been living with it probably for a while and been overcoming it for quite a long time. Yeah. And he'd obviously built in that resilience against it, even though it was physically hurting him, upsetting him. Yeah. Mentally, he became stronger than it. And eventually, he, you know, obviously, at, at whatever, you know, um, work with hospitals or doctors or whatever needed to be, do to be done, and yeah. I can't comment on that, but he overcome it, and now he's playing again. It's fantastic. Great lad. Brilliant. Um... Just a couple of general questions, and I was going to say, of all the lads you've ever worked with, kind of United, like, who was the funniest? Who had the, the quickest wit, would you say? <laughs> who made you laugh the most? Well, the funniest was Tony Cotton, right. the goalkeeping coach. He's just so funny, that guy. He was absolutely brilliant. Just yeah. a really interesting lad. Um, as regards players. Yeah, was there any that just had you chuckling a lot during sessions? Ed Edwin Van der Sar. Right. So dry. Oh my goodness, he was dry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, they like the Dutch anyway, but there was always an edge to every th single thing he said. Fantastic guy. Brilliant. Great to work with him. And then, well, I suppose one last question, but I suppose it would be more, because like you say, you weren't necessarily dealing with the nutrition side of things. He was the one that you'd see like... He, because I remember in the 90s, it was always famous that Pally loved these Mars bars and Fergie was always trying to stop him from eating Mars bars. Probably quite forward thinking back then right. for Fergie thinking, you know, he wants to be, them to be eating healthy, but he was the fondest of a chocolate bar. Was there anyone who... I'm not saying that, you know, but I'll, I'll tell you. I'll just name one player and a nicer lad you will never come across. I absolutely loved him. Yeah. Although I actually asked... Alex Ferguson, if I could hit him with a stick, and he said yes, and that was Anderson. Now, I believe that he loved McDonald's, right? and he right. never got it right, and that's really sad because he had so much talent, that lad, but he could not get that side of it right. Right. And I think it was very much a dietary thing, and I think Trevor had gone by then, uh, or at least was there for a short period of time, and then uh, Trevor Lee, the dietitian, uh, and so he never, he never got it right. Um, Anderson and I think that's so sad because he had such um, possibilities and did he because yeah I mean we all know with Anderson the kind of the, the fans perception of him yeah pretty much that maybe a bit of a wasted talent but it, w with yourself you say like maybe lacked a bit of discipline in terms of getting it right with the nutrition or for whatever reason mm. never got it right yeah. with the nutrition 
But did he come to you for sessions? Was he, was well, he doing strength? He, didn't make, he yeah. may not have been eating right. Yeah, was he no. at least trying no, to do the physical side of things? He, he wasn't doing enough. I mean, right. one of his friends, <laughs> one right. of his best friends was who? Cristiano. Right. Well, you only have to go and look at him, what he's doing. Yeah. And he wasn't doing anything like he's doing. So to me, with him knowing him and seeing what he'd done, he came in after Cristiano. And yeah. <laughs> you just look at people who were doing really well and think, well, that's what I've got to do. And he didn't. That saddened me. Because yeah. I really would have liked to have helped the lad, you know what I mean? But um, the, it, it never happened. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a, it's a sad one with him because it came with great expectation, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, you'll never find a nicer lad, and that's the thing, because you could talk to him, but yeah. he had other things he were doing, and, and, you know, it never happened for him. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I mean, obviously, we are here today at your cedar speed uh, training center now a new uh, a new one that you've just got now and yeah. i believe there's another one across the way that yeah your son and daughter yeah. um also run but it's been an absolute pleasure it's always a pleasure chatting to people that have been in and around the club right got nice some to meet great you. insights and uh yeah um, i'm going to say anyone who any parents of young aspiring ronaldo's you know who to come to this is, this is the man <laughs> the, the the great thing is when cristiano went um, it was a real sad loss to me. I, you know, I loved all the players there. Yeah. But it was a, a great sad loss. But the one thing in my mind was, I've got to find a new Ronaldo. <laughs> That's really important to me. And I'm getting some great kids coming here now. You right. know, I've got some real talent coming here. And um, knowing and understanding the way that you need to develop it is so exciting still. Even though I'm yeah. you know, getting on in years, I yeah. still have that hope and belief. Uh, I've got some athletes here that are really, and it doesn't have to be like say in football. Yeah. You know, you can find Ronaldo's in whatever sport. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I look at loads of different sports across the, uh, the sporting world, and uh, there's, there's kids there that could be unbelievable. And sport is such a great thing to be in. Yeah. To oh. be fit and healthy and earn your money in sport, and at the end of the day, if you don't do well in a team, you become a physio, you become a, you know, a gym coach or whatever. Fantastic great thing to do and, and has anyone specifically come to you and cited oh well I, I know you worked with oh yeah they all do they all say oh, yeah, they, they, all, they all come on the back of yeah yeah it's, yeah it's I've the got, best uh, yeah. seal of approval you can <laughs> exactly yeah I, I've got very few local people come here they travel from all over yeah. you know different countries as well you know so I'm, I'm really lucky and it's fantastic it's a great place it's me and my youngest son who's working here uh, Sean was in the Commonwealth Games last year yeah. um, and we're working here together and doing all our different stuff and it's just a great place to be yeah well the proof's in the pudding as I say and he's Tyron <laughs> Ronaldo's get yourself to this man he's the man <laughs> lovely Mick really appreciate right. the time and you cheers